through strong. Let us pray. Father, we love you for the word today. Thank you, God. In the name of Jesus, Father God. Hallelujah. Thanking you for rough times. Thank you for trials. Thank you for tribulations, Father God. Or otherwise, Lord, we'd be spoiled little babies not growing and not maturing. And so, God, we thank you, God. Now, nobody likes the trial of God, but we do know that it's for our own good. It is for our benefit that we may grow thereby. And so we're thanking you, Father God, for this. And we give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Well, it's a rough times that we are living in. Amen? Amen. Nobody knew at the beginning of 2020 what would be happening. We're all thinking it's another year, another year of blessings, another year of peace, another year, amen, to grow and excel. We we're expecting a great revival. I had six speakers lined up starting from Sunday straight through to Friday. I had prophets coming. Uh, we had uh, uh, Prophet Yard is going to speak. Pastor David Slope was going to speak. And he's a, he's a, you know who he is. He's a man of God, a prophet, amen. Yeah. Prophet Andre was going to finish it out on a Friday yeah. night. Yeah. But yeah. then Corvid came yeah. and broke it all to pieces. We are not able to have revival. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we went down on shutdown. But as you can see, that we are alive and doing well. Amen. 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 We are going on. We're going forward. Amen. Yes, We've learned that uh, through these uh, temptations, trials, and tribulations that we're not going to be bothered or we're not going to be held back. We're not going to be held down. We're not going to be kicked around. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. And, but uh, even as we speak, even all of Europe is still down in lockdown. India's on lockdown. Other yes. countries are on lockdown. Yes. All you do is go to the store. And go home, mm -hmm. and the ones that have a job go to a job, and you know practice social distancing. But they have, some of the nations of the world are worse off than we are. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We have seen earlier in this year where the state of California told us that we couldn't sing and we couldn't chant, okay. but hey, we did anyway. Amen. 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 Because the governor don't know what he's doing. All right. Yes, Lord. <laughs> so let us take a look at some of the things. And some of the pressures and some of the struggles we're going through and the trials, amen, that we've gone through in order for us to, to be at our best. Mm -hmm. First of all, how many know what diamonds are? How many wish you had a bunch of diamonds? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I think my wife's got her hand up. She got both hands up. Amen. <laughs> amen. The diamond starts out. It is formed from heat and pressure. Diamonds require greater temperature and far more direct pressure to form, amen, which is a primary reason why the end result of all this pressure, the diamond is what? Considered priceless, amen? Mm. Uh, that, so he says here that the extreme heat and pressure can only be found far into the earth. And since coal is formed near the surface, the heat and pressure on coal is severe less. But diamonds require a temperature of about 22,000 degrees Fahrenheit and a pressure of 725,000 pounds per square inch. It is the extreme heat and the pressure followed by cooling, which gives a diamond hardness not found in coal or any other substance. The cooling takes place when the diamonds are forced to the surface by the volcano eruptions. So... What does uh, di diamonds do when they're in the rough? They're going through a lot of pressure, and they're going through a lot of heat. Mm -hmm. Gee, does that sound like my life? Does that sound like your life? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> We're going through some pressure. Yeah, We're going through some heat. That's why we look forward to heaven, because we know in heaven there's no more pressure, and there's no more heat, Amen. and there's no more hassles. Yes, and they sing up, talk about peace in the valley, well, yeah, the peace in the valley will be when we get to heaven because we ain't going to have to fight and learn of wars no more. Yes, Lord. They say that pressure makes us better. <laughs> now, I know some people argue with you about, about that one. What do you mean it makes me better? What's wrong with you? <laughs> no, it's true. It makes you better because if you can't take the heat, then you never, never, you might as well not get in the fire, Amen. right? But if you're going to live for God, you're going to do what? You're going to experience some heat. You're going to experience some pressure. And you're going to experience some trials. That's like I like what this man wrote here. He says, pressure makes us better. 
Yes, who? I'm Amen. getting better. Yes, Lord. Amen. Right? Yes, Lord. You know, the older you get in Christ, the what? The more better you're supposed to get. Amen. Yes, not the more worldly, not the more cardinal, which means fleshly or worldly, but better and stronger in your faith. Amen. One man says the necessity is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. All right? But I would argue and say that pressure is the mother of performance. Hallelujah. How do we perform well under pressure? Do we get mad and throw hissy fits and roll on the ground? I remember seeing a little kid. He wasn't getting his way. And so he started screaming. His face turned red. He held his breath and fell to the ground and started rolling around. But you know what? This little mama, she was smart. Because she went right over there with her foot. And wham! And let him have it. You know what? He started breathing again. And crying. But he didn't get his way. All right. Some people say, oh, she's cruel. No, no. You got to do what you got to do with that kid or the kid's going to be ruining and running your life. Amen. And I'm seeing a four-year-old turn around and tell his mother what to do and start punching on her because she told him no. Wow. That's out of hand. Right? Yeah. Somebody forgot to be applying the Board of Education. Yes, Amen. Right. How many remember that? Amen. The paddle was called the Board of Education. Amen. Oh, no. You see, it is when challenges raise their head that we are forced to apply all the knowledge of God's Word and to boldly stand in faith. God didn't say cry. You shed them tears. It's so hard. No, He said stand. He said make your stand. He said apply all the knowledge of God's Word and boldly stand in faith. If we have prepared properly through training, practice, and ongoing earnest and effort, we can rely on that training in challenging times to be help for us in the most diligent and productive uh, in the most, right? I take what I learn. What does God say? The trials are here. You don't think that was a trial seeing that tent blown up on the roof? Oh, yeah. We do. Joseph got out, we got a few tools and got out here and began to disassemble it. Not crying, right? Amen. Well, of course I felt bad because I got blown up on the roof. I got pictures of you. You want to see it? I'll show it to you after church. Okay? Yeah. But not crying, but saying, okay, we'll just keep going forward. Right, prophet? Amen. That's it. Like we're going to go yes. forward. We're not going to be. <laughs> None of that stuff. Blew up on the roof. It, this one, this, this big, big one, one here. Big the big one, one blew wow. up. All right. Yeah. But you see, wow. if we take our training, amen, and, our, and we can take a challenge, amen, and we can be victorious. Remember, what we preached before, we'll still say it again. Remember, be, know, and do, right? Mm -hmm. Be the man of God, be the woman of God, know what you're supposed to do, and do it. Yes, That's Lord. it. All right. Motivation gives the people of God the will to do anything they can accomplish the gold and come through the trial uncompromised. That's it. We don't have to compromise. Well, you know, if you just give in to the devil, you know, it won't be so bad. Guess what? That's a lie because he'll dump it on you worse. Yes, he because will. he got a foothold. Amen. Amen. And if he gets a foothold, you say, if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. So you need to hold fast to your training and yes, hold on to God. Cast not away your faith, which has a great record pence of reward. Have you heard that from 2 Corinthians? Was it chapter 10, verse 35? And Paul's telling people, don't give up and quit. Don't be little babies. Don't be immature. He says, hold on. He says, don't cast it away. Don't get mad and quit and throw it down. Well, I'm never going to serve God again. Amen? No, no, you serve God regardless. All right? You think about the children of Israel that were what? taken away 70 years in the captivity into Babylon. Yes, Lord. Hmm. They were there for 70 years. Some of them never got to come back mm -hmm. to the land of promise. They saw Jerusalem. They were hauled away as prisoners. They were made slaves. And then what happens? Mm -hmm. They never came back. Yes, you know, how many people lived to be 70 years old? Mm -hmm. Not a lot. And then someone was saying back in the earlier times is that men only lived to be about 40 or 50 years old. Only a few live to be in the in the older age. All right. But he says here that if we do not cast away our faith, amen, then he says the results will be for the long run. We will receive the overcomer's crown. That's called the crown of life. 
Amen. Amen. I want the crown. How many want a crown? Amen. 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 I don't want no flames. Amen. <laughs> you know, like there's a, a little uh, bumper sticker I saw years ago. It said, fly or fry. Now you think about it. You know, people are going to say, what are you talking about flying? Well, if you serve God, you're going to fly to heaven. Well, what's the frying? If you don't serve God, you're going to hell. All right? So that's it. Fly or fry. Amen. <laughs> that's what God wants us to do. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also have overcome and sat down with my father on his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the churches, what the Spirit says to the churches. What do we get to do? We're going to put on a crown. Yes, Amen. Amen. I don't know. It's an old time song. Maybe we should try to find it on the internet and play it. Or sing in church, I shall wear a crown. There you go. Evangelist Bobby knows what I'm talking about. It. When the trumpet sounds, I'm going to wear a crown. That's it. Okay. That's it. I'll, I'll get it. We're going to start singing that one. Amen. Amen. Because we are the overcomers and going forward. Now, having done all, right, we stand. Yes, Amen. Lord. Now, let's look at another one here. Another type of trial. And I'm going to talk about fish. How many like fish? Pescalo, right? All yeah, right. It's called the codfish. C-O-D-F-I-S-H. It is famous for its taste and it's highly desirable. But they were difficult to get to the market when the codfish were first being shipped over here from the East Coast. They froze them. But they noticed that the flavor was lost during shipping. Someone came up with an idea to put them in tanks and ship them in actual seawater to the west coast. But even then, the codfish would arrive at the market three or four days later and had lost much of their flavor. And it also become flaky and becoming soft and mushy. Now, oh, isn't that interesting? Now, here's where it gets interesting. Amen. This is where it gets kind of fun. Finding... A creative, uh, finding a solution, a creative person came up with this idea. All the cod were placed in the seawater tank with a couple of catfish in the tank with them. The catfish is the natural enemy of the codfish. So therefore, the catfish, amen, during the shipping would chase the codfish all around the tank the whole time. And when the fish arrived at the market, they were as fresh as newly caught, with no loss of labor or texture. You see, the catfish kept the cod from becoming stale. The catfish kept them fresh. Okay? Do you see that? So, when they ship the codfish, and when they get here, they don't know. They can't ship them frozen because it loses flavor. They can ship them uh, fresh because when they get here, they still lose their flavor. But when they put the catfish in there, the catfish are at what? Antagonistic. They are, they are what? The bickering fish. They're the fish that irritate you. Like someone said, I don't like that guy. He's a pain in my side, right? Okay, so that's what the catfish are to the codfish. But we see it is through what? Pressures, mm -hmm. through trials, through tribulations, right, in that tank, because you're a codfish, and you're kind of no good catfish, so you got to swim, so they're going like this all the time, so they arrive fresh, they arrive strong, and they have a good, the good taste is with them, all because they've been agitated. Oh, well, what does that say about your life and my life? That we got to be agitated, amen? amen. That we got to go through trials and tribulations, so we'll be what? At our peak. That's it. We wanted to be at the best. We want to be what God's got for us. Yes. You know, it's critical to see that these trials might provide momentary setbacks to our visible progress in the faith, but they are all to be providing the fuel we need to get to our destination. Amen. That's it. Amen. Yes, Lord. Y'all need some catfish in your life. <laughs> That's it. Y'all need to be what? Troubled. Amen. Yes, Y'all need some trials. I said, y'all need some pressures. Amen. Y'all need some tribulation. What kind of preaching is that, preacher? I like that happy gospel where we're happy all the time and, 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 and walking with rose gardens and, and happy and, and nothing. No. No, we tell it like it is. Trials come to make you strong. Amen. Y'all need some catfish. Amen. Hallelujah.
Well, at least not until after the fast. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. You see, they, they build in our lives passion, perseverance, and deep character change that goes far beyond the surface. Amen. Amen. Change that we're trying to manifest in our life. Often, God answers our prayer for, for, for greater holy, holiness. Whoa. Uh, by providing better uh, not by providing better circumstances to help us perform better but by God provides trials oh wait a minute wait a minute no okay right we know what the objections are but listen to James chapter 1 verses 2 and 4 my brethren count it all joy when you fall into various trials what? Yeah, count it joy. Amen. What do you mean? Joy. He says count it all joy. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Okay? Ah, testing. I'm being, I got some catfish bothering me, amen? Well, guess what? It's going to teach you some patience. He says here, he says in verse 4, But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Yes, That's it. That's oh, James 3. That is James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Oh, you see that? That is what? Why we have the tribulation. Why we have the trial. Why we got some catfish in our life. Amen? Yes, Lord. We're going to call this, I think I'll write this down and change the name of the sermon to the catfish sermon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, we see that. Now let's look at one more thing here. Friction. How many know what friction is? No, it's not you and the ex-wife fight. <laughs> no, all right. It can be, amen. All right. But friction is a force between two surfaces that are sliding. Surfaces, I should say. And trying to slide across each other. For example, if you push a book along the floor, the friction makes that what? Difficult for you to push it around because it's hitting with friction. All right, friction always works in the opposite direction to the direction in which the object is moving or trying to move. Friction is always slow, always slows a moving object down. Okay, let's look at this. Rub your hands. Rub your hands for a moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, what do we feel? Life well, feels some friction, don't it? See that? So also some warmth on a cold day. It's a good idea to warm up your hands. All right. So we know that the rougher the surface, the rougher the friction is produced. Friction also produces heat. All right. So we know about that. Resistance is the impending slowing or stopping effect exerted by one material or another. It can be a brother and sister. It can be a family church member. It can be a fellow believer, it, it, which can cause friction. It can happen on the job, out of the neighborhood. There is opposition. There's strife. There's hassles, and all are friction. And so we go through these, right? We go through pressures. Amen. We have uh, catfish agitating us. Amen. Mm -hmm. And we also have what here? Friction. All right. In First Peter chapter one, verse six and seven. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. The genuineness, genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by the fire, may be found to the praise, honor, and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That's it. Troubles. Amen. Afflictions. But he says, it is, even though you are tested by the fire, you can feel the flames, amen, singeing the hair on your neck. But he says, it's to the glory of God. Amen. God gets delight out of watching you persevere and not quitting, but going through the trial yes, Lord. and getting that victory, achieving that victory, and walking in that victory. That's what God likes. The ones that uh, he's a father, so he'll pick those that are, you know, ran off and hiding underneath a rock. He loves those people. But here's the thing is, delight the heart of the father by being what? One that endures the trials. This one man made a point here. I thought, well, that's good. I says, how many of you guys have ever flown a kite? 
You haven't flown a kite? Well, there's no. always a first. Amen? <laughs> kite flyers, all right? What did you know? The kite rises against the opposition of the wind. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. We just don't rerun with the kite. But the wind, the opposition of the wind, the wind does what? It, it rises yeah. it and yeah. causes it to go way up there. And you just see, wow, that's way, way up there. Although my uh, luck with kites was, bam. <laughs> 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 you know. I, I, I don't know why I just had a hard time flying a kite. Huh. All right. But it says the opposition is what causes the kite to rise. The opposition is what's going to cause you to rise in God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Here's another one. A diamond cannot be polished without friction. So a Christian cannot be perfected without a trial. Amen. Thank you, God. God wants us to grow, doesn't he? Yes, he doesn't want us to stay in the hole. Amen? He doesn't want us sitting there crying. He wants you to rise up and be the person that God has called you to be. Amen. We know that trials are, are what? They are a test of your performance and your qualities and your suitability. Amen. Of someone or something. Amen. amen. Trials, amen, come to make you strong. Oh. There's that friction, amen. The trials and tribulations of a married life, you could say that it tests a person's endurance or forbearance. Mm -hmm. We know the verb means to put the test, to put through its paces, and to prove, amen. How many like to be proved of God? Amen. 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 If you are being proved yes, and you pass it, then you are approved amen. of God. Amen. Amen. And as the Word of God says, let every man study and to show himself approved yes, by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want God's approval. Amen. Amen. I want that Amen. stamp. Big red letters. Approved. Amen. Right? Amen. Yes, Lord. That's it. You go for that loan. You've seen that commercial. Approved. Amen. Yes. That's what we want. Hallelujah. That crown of glory. Amen. Where Jesus said, you're going to sit down. Amen. Amen. You're going to put on a crown. And you're going to sit down with me. Hallelujah. On my throne. Boy, that's, his throne is what? That's the guest of honor chair. Yes, Lord. And because you have overcome, he give you a crown and says, come on up yes. here and have a seat. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, think about it. I'm going to say, well, you know, oh, that's exciting. I get to sit down with him. Yes, Lord. I get to sit next to him. Hallelujah. Because I have endured that trial. Hallelujah. Psalms 119, verse 143, it says, Trouble, anguish, and distress have found me. They have taken their hold on me, but yet thy commandments are my delight. Hallelujah. What do we delight in? The commandments of God. Hallelujah. Who tells me to be steadfast, unmovable, and to always abound in the work of the Lord, knowing my labor in him is not in vain. And I went through troubles. I went through trials. You don't know my boss. You don't know my ex. You don't know my in-laws or the outlaws. You don't know the situation I went through. People will tell you, but hey, what we want to hear is you don't know, but hey, through God, I Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Through amen. God, amen. I made it. Hallelujah. He helped me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. It says, thy commandments are my delight. The Bible says, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. The old King James says, hearken. Hearken to the word of the Lord. If you will hearken, if you will hear, you will persevere. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Notwithstanding this trouble, and in these troubles I have, no matter what comes, I have the same unfailing source of comfort, the truth of God, and notwithstanding that which may occur, I still make God and His law the source of my happiness. Amen. I know some people say their source of happiness is a bottle of booze. Others say their source is a marijuana. Others say their source is this or their source is that. But you know what? Those sources can't take you to heaven. Amen. And there is nothing anyone can do to get you to heaven. You have to make that decision yourself. And you have to talk to God for yourself and about yourself. So as we travel in this lifetime, there are the, we are like these codfish. We can become stagnant and lose our flavor. We're just waking up and doing the same things over and over and over. Sometimes we need a catfish. Remember? I said, y'all need a catfish. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. 
Thank you, God. We need difficult people in our lives that will keep us alert and will chase us, amen, and keep us active. That's it. As a catfish chased the cod and irritated it, but guess what? He was swimming all around and trying to stay away from them no-good, low-life catfish, mm -hmm. and guess what? They were stronger, hallelujah, hallelujah, because of the agitation, because of the pressure, amen, amen. because of the friction. They were stronger, yes, so. and that's what God wants you and I to be stronger. Yes, and maybe it is difficult to have these catfish or challenges in our lives. But because of those difficulties, it makes us grow more and more in strength and character. How many know that character counts? Amen. A good illustration is a character is being that when you went to the store, you handed them a $10 bill and they gave you too much money back. Character says, you say, oh, by the way, you gave me back too much money. Mm -hmm. A lack of character says, says, oh, praise the Lord, I get blessed with more money than I went to the store with. No, but did you know that person can lose their job? We had a friend uh, working at the Union Bank. Well, back then, I think it was called Wells, uh, it was called uh, First Interstate Bank. And she made a, mis a mistake on counting the money. And at the end of the day, I think she was like, what, $50, $60 short? Immediately fired. Oh, no. Immediately. You're out the door. That's the way the banks are. You mess up, you're out the door. So, you know, someone took advantage of her, cost her her job. Well, why would you want to keep the extra $4.99 and change and, and walk out there in the store thinking, aha, I got away with it, and have that person get their can from their job? That's not worth it. That, there's no character in that. All right. So, it says, let's look at someone here. Someone who doesn't want to fight. Someone who doesn't like the catfish in their life. Amen. They're also known as a non-combative. The modern word for this person is called a coward, one with a yellow streak down their back. The person who lacks the courage to do or to endure the dangerous and unpleasant things, these people are not right with God. Mark 4.17 says, They have no root in themselves, but they endure for a while. But when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. Well, God don't want us falling away. God says, keep going, keep Amen. fighting, rise up, and do what God has called you to do. Amen? Amen. And God's going to get you through it. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12 says, if we endure, we will also reign with him. Yes, Lord. Amen. Notice, we're going to put on a crown and sit down on the throne with him Amen. if we endure. Hallelujah. If we quit. Amen. Yes, Lord. If we disown him, he will disown us. Yes, Lord. That's a sad way. Who wants to be disowned by God? Amen. Depart from me, you wicked, into the lake of fire which was prepared for the devil and his angels. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Quitters. You read the book of Revelation, it says liars and drunkards and, and those that uh, uh, you know make up love and, and tell a lie and all these other things, the abominable. These people are cast into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, what are you saying, brother? Don't you believe in one saved, always saved? No, I don't. Yes, Every believer, you know, is going to get to heaven by what? Persevering, yes, being Lord. faithful, regardless of the catfish in our life. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we don't want to be disowned. Remember, I've told you about this lady that called TBN and told me, if I would known I was going to have all these troubles, I would have never gotten saved. Said. Yeah, she actually said that. Well, guess what? I hate to be in that lady's shoes. I hope that she um, uh, gets right with God. Remember, do not fight your problems and setbacks. Use them. Use them for your better. Use them and you're going on. Amen. Hallelujah. Because, see, the things that Satan throws in our path to, destroy, to defeat us can be stepping stones to victory. Amen. What Satan used to beat up on you in the new convert, he can't get you with it now because you've got what? Tougher, Amen. stronger, wiser. Yeah. All right. Amen. So don't let him throw things in your way. Yeah. Look, look at this. You know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, steadfast, endurance, growth, testing, and impartation. 
what will you learn? Remember when Jesus went through a trial? Right there, when uh, he was tempted, uh, right after he did a 40-day fast? Mm -hmm. It said that after the devil left him, said the angels came, and they ministered to him. Mm -hmm. Amen. When you go through the trial, and you got the victory, you're happy because you beat the devil, and the Lord's going to do what? He's going to minister to you and give you grace and give you peace. Amen. This Loewe of New Testament says this, Be assured that the testing of your faith leads to power of endurance. Amen. I said, we all talk about, I want the power. Oh, Amen. Yes, we want the power to endure. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Right. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 4, and we're getting ready to close down here. And it says, So we deceive ourselves, so we, so we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and for your faith in all your persecutions and tribulations. Paul's writing to commend the church of Thessalonica. For they went through it, but they persevered. Amen. They didn't, they didn't quit and run away and go hide. Go into a cave. Amen. Go into the cellar. Go in the basement and hide out. They came and they stood and he commended them. Tribulations and persecutions often befall God's dearest and choice servants. Amen. But like we said, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, it says, In fact, all those who live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Yes, Lord. 2 Timothy 3, 12 says that anyone that wants to live right will have trouble from others. <laughs> there it is. You want to live right? Here it come. Amen. Here come the catfish. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. That's it. Acts 14, 22, it says, Strengthen the disciples and encourage them to continue in the faith and by telling us, it is necessary to pass through many troubles on our way into the kingdom of God. Yes, you see, Paul and Silas went. And they said, let us go and encourage the brethren. So they had gone through so many areas, and they built so many churches up, and now they said, let's go back and encourage them. So they went back to encourage them. And they didn't say, oh, it's just the peachy king. The days of wine and roses. Happy, 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 joy, joy. No, we went back and told him the way it is. It's necessary to go through many troubles on our way to the kingdom of God. Our conclusion, those who want to be as diamonds must first go through the pressures and the fires of life. Amen. Those who have a healthy life like the codfish, you need some opposition like catfish to keep you moving forward and swimming around, which will make you strong and vibrant. And we all need to endure the fiction, friction that comes our way because we'll grow stronger and gain wisdom that we need for tough times. Amen. Amen. Hey, we're not beat around the bush. There are tough times ahead. Amen. Amen. But we already know what to do. Amen. God Amen. has spoken to us. He says, obey the word of the Lord, hear the word of the Lord, and follow what God has told us to do. Because when we pray for the welfare of the land, so will it go well with us. Amen. When we pray for the leaders... Amen. It will go well with us. So that's what we're going to do. We are going on. Amen. Here's one, like what was this one guy said. <laughs> this guy's funny. He says, you may not be the smartest, strongest, or the most innovative, but you can still win by being the most consistent. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's be consistent. Amen. Yes. Right? You don't have to be strong like Superman. You don't have to be resourceful like Batman. Uh -huh. Amen. But you can still win by simply being consistent. Consistent means what? Faithfulness. Amen. Now, I'll tell you one thing about oil. It is always consistent. It is what? Gooey. Correct? It's always gooey. It's consistent. And if you keep your, your, your machines oiled upright, they last and last and last. So there is a thing about that. So be like oil. Be consistent. Amen. The people who did hard, unpopular, disciplined things during the good times are the ones set up to thrive during the bad times. Amen. amen. So this is why you practice. Amen. This is what you do. Amen. Hallelujah. You do the hard things. You do the things that are unpopular. Yes, you Lord. discipline yourself during the good times. So when the bad time comes, what? You're set up to thrive. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thrive means to live. Thrive means to prosper. Thrive means to go on. Thrive means to be faithful. Amen. Mm -hmm. You can thrive during the bad times. Yes, Always forgive your enemies. Amen. I've thrown this in there for no charge. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
because nothing annoys them so much. Amen. Amen. That's it. Be good to your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you.